I now invite Dr. Leanne Gonzalez to tell us about the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week that begins from Thursday, November 18, and also about the Glo Go Blue campaign. Dr. Gonzalez is the Technical Officer for AMR Awareness and Campaigns in WHO's Antimicrobial Resistance Division. She coordinates WHO's involvement in World Micro Antimicrobial Awareness Week. In addition, working on the division's broader AMR-related awareness and behavior changes, change portfolios. Over to you, Dr. Gonzalez. You are... You are muted. Please unmute yourself. We cannot hear you. Apologies. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. 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 Perfect. Thank you, Shova. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and thank you to Shoba and Thomas for beautifully setting up this presentation. Um, we are grateful to CNS for putting together this briefing because this is extremely timely. World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, as Shoba mentioned, begins this Thursday and runs from the 18th through the 24th of November. And so what I'm going to do in my presentation is give you a bit of background as to why we globally come together to celebrate this week um, and hopefully how it can inform the reporting that you do as well. A little bit of background on uh, World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, or WOW, as we call it. Um, it is something that has been celebrated, is celebrated jointly across the tripartite organizations that Dr. Taylor mentioned in her presentation. That's the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Organization for Animal Health, and WHO, as well as in more recent years, the UN Environmental Program. So similar to antimicrobial resistance being a One Health issue that needs to get addressed in different sectors, during this week of international awareness, all of these sectors work together to raise awareness of antimicrobial resistance in their, um, in their universe. It is a relatively young health campaign. I know we have many people here who have worked for, for decades in tuberculosis. So as compared with the decades worth of advocacy and awareness in some of in diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, and HIV, WOW has only been marked since 2015. Um, and it came about with the passing of the Global Action Plan for Antimicrobial anti, uh, Resistance, the GAP. Um, and the GAP had, was the first sort of international plan um, that was passed at the World Health Assembly that brought countries around the table together to come up with a harmonized plan of action for addressing AMR. And one of the first things, that for one of the first objectives that was there in the GAP was to improve awareness and understanding through communication, education, and training. And I think the two presenters before me have, have really emphasized, and it's come out in the discussion, the fact that this is a complex issue and one around which we need to have general awareness. So um, WOW offers a chance for a week to bring global awareness to this global health threat. Um, and that we see as a, an integral and, and critical first step to behavior change. People can't change their behavior if they don't understand what the issue is. Some things that have happened in WOW since it was developed um, are that last year we expanded from focusing on antibiotics. Previously, WOW was World Antibiotics Awareness Week. And from 2020 onwards, we broadened to encompass all antimicrobials. So that includes antibiotics, but also antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics. And so that means that we're able to discuss and, and talk about together resistance as it emerges in different types of diseases. So, you know, we talked about tuberculosis, which is bacteria based, but also drug resistant malaria, which is parasite based, drug resistant HIV, which is a virus, etc. And the other thing that came up is in 2020, we fixed the dates of observance from the 18th to the 24th of November. So this year, the theme for WOW is spread awareness, stop resistance. The idea being that if we all understand and we make efforts to spread antimicrobial resistance awareness where we can, that that is that integral first stop to stopping the rise of drug resistance itself. 
With this theme, the hope of the tripartite agencies is that everyone across all of the One Health sectors can become an AMR awareness champion. So the goal is to encourage everyone to be a champion in their sphere of influence. If you are a medical student and you're hoping to reach out to members of your medical school, that is brilliant. If you are um, a farmer and have the opportunity to reach out within your community, that's important. If you're a member of the AMR Global Leaders Group and you are a parliamentarian or the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, you can act in your um, much larger sphere of influence as well. Another thing that we want to do with spread awareness and stop resistance is we want to humanize antimicrobial resistance. I think we all recognize it, even in some of the questions we've seen, that it's very easy to fixate on the drugs and the bugs, to focus on the specific drug names, which are really long, you know, just talk about issues of access, all of which are critical. But at the same time, if we're thinking about how we make people care about an issue, one of the things is to humanize the issue, to show people that this is not just about the microbes and the microscopic, but it's about people today who are affected. It's about individuals who have experienced an infection. It's about doctors and nurses whose um, methods of treatment and, and um, prescribing protocols now have to shift because of the resistance that they're seeing. It's about um, you know, farmers and agriculture workers who are seeing shifts in how they raise their animals and in their economic livelihoods. So we want to humanize AMR as an issue, not of tomorrow, but one affecting individuals and communities today. Um, when, when we talk about, because I know so much of what we do right now both exists in, it exists in the virtual world and on social media, ways that you can tap into everything that is happening, the very latest going on in the AMR world during WOW are on those hashtags, WOW, antimicrobial resistance, handle with care, and AMR, and that's how you can join the global conversation on social media. If you're looking for more background on just the how we're describing the campaign and the agreed upon phrasing from the tripartite organizations for WOW, there's campaign guidance, which I can post in the chat afterwards, that gives some uniform language on the theme, um, key information on social media, important dates to mark within the week. And it also provides an idea of some of the um, event activities you might see in your respective communities and national markets. So there, the, the guidance provided global level event ideas with the idea being that these could be locally adapted uh, depending on the needs and the interests of um, communities, um, different professional communities, different geographic communities. Some other resources that are available, that um, QR code, and I'll post links as well uh, during the Q&A session, um, takes you to WHO's campaign landing page. But there are a variety of social media stills that are openly available for download and use. Um, uh, some photo stories. We are also trying to walk the talk when we talk about how to humanize AMR as an issue. And so we are trying to um, bring together human stories from around the world. Um, and then, of course, a variety of website resources as well. And then Shoba had mentioned specifically um, the wanting to talk about a, a new initiative that the tripartite is launching, a very visual initiative. And so we are asking people this, this week, for this year for the first time, to go blue for AMR. And the reason that we're doing that is because we were looking for ways to bring needed global visibility to this health issue that, as you've heard in previous presentations, covers so many sectors, covers so many diseases, and yet is not often, is not understood or talked about enough. We wanted to elevate that conversation and the visibility of this issue. And so we're initiating a color campaign to do so. And the idea of this color campaign is that by encouraging all the different sectors and parts of our community that can affect antimicrobial resistance or are affected by antimicrobial resistance, by encouraging them to light up or color themselves blue during the week, we can get a snapshot of the extent to which AMR as a health threat affects and is affected by our action or inaction and the action or inaction of stakeholders in all of these sectors. And so what we're asking people to do is to engage with the color campaign in one or more of um, like three different levels. So first, 
people can go blue as an individual. And I am a walking example of that today. Um, during the campaign, people are encouraged to wear blue, um, to adjust their social media profiles um, to blue using some resources that we've produced that are available on our website. Um, and to describe and use that opportunity to share their personal commitment, to share their story, to share why this is an issue that they feel passionately about, why they see the need um, to bring awareness to this issue. Um, at the other end of the spectrum and something that is probably most visible is I'll uh, number three, what we have there going blue is a community. So we are, of course, encouraging landmarks to light up blue. And um, Thomas may have some, some of our latest news on where we might expect to see that taking place. But we're encouraging people to light up, you know, their national landmarks, but also um, different um, One Health uh, infrastructure. So a great example is lighting up water towers or sanitation facilities, just to again demonstrate how AMR, that AMR affects these issues. And the one that I think is personally the most interesting is we're asking workplaces to go blue. So we're asking anyone who, again, is affected by or can affect antimicrobial resistance, whether you're a pharmaceutical company, whether you are a hospital for uh, or a health facility, whether you're a veterinary hospital, um, whether you are a pharmacy for humans or animals or both, to consider lighting up blue and again, demonstrating, again, the extent to which um, antimicrobial resistance affects us all. And when organizations, when individuals light up blue, it's also an opportunity. We want them to share that both with so on social media, but also through traditional media outlets as well, use as, a, as an opportunity to highlight either corporate commitments or organizational commitments or national commitments to antimicrobial resistance and action in that area. So that leaves me Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, this QR code, I will um, uh, include a link to this in, um, in the chat afterwards, Cub is, takes you to our events page at WHO. There are a number of launches that are coming out, which might be of interest. There are new HIV drug resistant numbers getting launched on the 24th of November, for example. We want you to cover um, both international uh, AMR related events going on during WOW, and also those happening nationally, because it is really encouraging to see just how much um, we are seeing national governments get involved and take this opportunity to highlight um, their work in AMR, how much we're seeing professional associations around the world get involved, student groups around the world get involved. Um, and we want to um, encourage coverage of that. We also want to um, encourage people to find and cover the local stories and the human interest story to again, make sure that we are put, putting a human face to this issue. And finally, and this was mentioned by Thomas and um, Dr. Taylor in her previous con uh, presentation, you know, words matter and the words that you are using to describe this issue, which is a complex issue, matter and make critical contributions to broadly educating the general public, but also prescribers, prescribers and providers. And so um, we hope that you make use of the existing resources, the WHO fact sheets that we have uh, to make sure that we're reporting accurately. I'll stop there. Thank you again, Shoba. Um, and thank you for the opportunity, everyone. Thank you very much. And Leanne, I, I also tried to wear a shade of blue today, uh, different from yours. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing up this issue of humanizing uh, AMR, the problem of AMR. I think that is very uh, important to demedicalize it when we are uh, talking to people. And um, it is not just about medicines and microbes, but about actually human beings. That's important, as you brought out. Uh, we have had many questions, even advanced questions, uh, and um, basically from some African countries and Asian countries. Uh, one of them pertains to what are the key messages for the common public, even beyond WAP, which uh, uh, media and others and we as individuals can uh, concentrate upon. And is there any significance, particular significance of the color blue? Why? Yeah. Those are those are great questions. I mean, I think Thomas actually mentioned them. He summarized them beautifully. But I, I would say one is whoever you are, we all have a role to play um, in in 
preventing the rise of antimicrobial resistance. And if we want to know if we're talking really general public um, rather than, you know, I would say farmers have their own messages, pharmacists have their own messages, but general public, it's when you need antimicrobials, that's antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, or antiparasitics, these are medicines that we all need to collectively work to preserve. And so the way that we can do that as individuals is to take them only when prescribed and to take them as prescribed. That's, you know, that is probably the base message um, that when it comes to antimicrobials specifically. I think uh, Liz mentioned in her presentation as well that there are broader health promotion things that also play critical roles in preventing um, antimicrobial resistance. And that is making sure that you know our vaccinations are up to date, making sure that we take um, we are, you know, advocates of good um, hand washing, personal hygiene practices as well. And these are things that we're seeing um, a lot of, of, thankfully, a lot of global promotion on because of COVID, obviously. But for antimicrobials specifically, take them only when you need it, as prescribed by a healthcare provider, and take them as prescribed. Um, and then with um, with relation to the color blue, that's actually it's a really good question, and it's one that we we get quite a lot. Um, so the, the answer is that we were trying to, we were searching for a color that we could link to AMR awareness. And what we thought of, because you've heard One Health used quite a lot, like health across sectors and light blue is this color that is associated with health broadly, I think possibly because of WHO a little bit. And so that felt like a very natural fit when we want to talk about health across all sectors. At the same time, light blue is, is a color that I think we associate possibly because of the UN with collaboration, international and multi-sectoral collaboration. So that made it a very natural fit for antimicrobial awareness, a one health issue that requires international collaboration. Um, and that's what we've seen. And then the other, a very pragmatic thing is, you know, we, this is a young, this is a young health campaign. Um, and one of the enduring symbols of this young campaign is the symbol that you can see over my shoulder here, which is the antimicrobials handle with care stamp, that blue symbol. And so the opportunity to pick a color that seemed like a natural fit for antimicrobials and to also build upon the existing identity of this young campaign um, felt like a, a very natural choice. Thank you very much. And uh, now we are waiting for comments from Thomas. Well, thank you very much again, Shobha. And first of all, thanks a lot to Lian, who uh, you know did a really good job with that presentation, excellent uh, presentation and uh, responses as well. I actually would like to say two things that I think might help. The first is, you know, Lian has uh, put in uh, the the chat box, the links to the WOW, the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week campaign page. And in that, you will find materials that are free to use, high quality visuals, high quality graphics, uh, videos, and so on. Please use them as freely as you wish. The, the stamp that she talked about, Handle Antimicrobials with Care, it's there for you, for you to use as you wish in different languages, and please use it. But also my second point is besides using the materials that are available and the messages that you'll find in the website, I really want you to talk about going blue. The reason for this is that we hope that many monuments across the world will light up in blue. Our own headquarters, the building that you see behind me, that top part, that whole terrace is going to go blue for the week. But when it goes blue, it will be meaningless unless the media has told people why it's going blue. So if you could communicate you know, in advance of the week and during the week that the blue color is the AMR color, and this is when we remember that we must preserve our antimicrobials, we must not misuse them, we must not overuse them, then that color will have some meaning. Thank you, Shobha, and thank you, Leah. Uh, thank you, uh, Thomas. Just uh, there is a comment for you from Rita Vidyadana from Indonesia. And she says, I agree with Mr. Thomas Joseph that media can play a great role in raising people's awareness on AMR and its critical impacts on people's health, as well as on animals and plants. Yet 
media people have to be equipped with deep knowledge on this issue which i think this global forum is able to impart them before covering and reporting and humanizing it and uh, she wants to ask from lian have you already engaged media on your global and national campaigns yeah that's a really good question so um just as for what's coming up for wow i know that there are weekly media advisories that who puts out um just to brief journalists around the world um who are subscribed to receive those media advisories and so the one that is going out i think this week will have some alert about wow and and the fact that this is coming up and linked to to the corresponding pages a lot of which um either i've posted or bobby very helpfully has done thank you bobby um and the i know that i believe the hope is that you know who has been doing these weekly press briefings um starting from covid and, and now they are continuing i believe that there will likely be um mention of this in in the press briefing on the tail end of wow so on uh maybe the week of the 24th itself i do know that when it comes to briefing um journalists in around the world our regional and country offices take a um take the lead on that and so what i know from our comms colleagues here is that all of our regional and country offices have been briefed on on world antimicrobial awareness week and so um we we hope to see we we're very fortunate to have some really excellent um regional campaigns that go on during wow um and so i think in a lot of a lot of the regions where people in this call are coming from you'll have some regionally specific and regionally relevant information coming out for journalists as well okay thank you 